just like on Thursday. Write down what I'm writing and then I will go around and give you credit for it after if you have all the work shown. Um, yeah, we'll just go through these one by one. Um, first question, as you may have realized when you read it, it's on density, which actually isn't a lesson in the textbook, but it does come up on the EOC. Um, density is something you've seen in science. If you don't remember, there is a very simple equation for density. The equation is density equals mass over volume. That equation is not on the reference sheet. It's something that you have to have memorized. One good way to remember it is it's like density equals, it makes like a heart, if you remember the heart, mass over volume. So that can help you set it up. And then using that equation, you can use it any which way to either solve for volume or solve for mass or solve for density, whatever they're asking for. Okay, so for this problem, it says a science Scientist discovers a spherical object in the solar system with a mass of this much and a volume of this much. Okay, so mass and volume. Um, he uses the table shown to classify the planet based on density. So you have to use a mass and volume to find the density and then use that density to classify it as a gas or a rocky planet. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to put one number on top of the other. The mass is 1.1 times 10 to the 25th power. The volume, 2.9 times 10 to the 24th power. And you may be realizing that putting that in the calculator may not be realistic, especially since you're only going to be able to use a basic calculator on testing. Um, so here's how you'd simplify it. This is like 10 or 25 tens multiplied by itself, and there, here's 24 tens. So to simplify this, all 24 of these tens would cancel, and there'd be left with one 10 on top. Everybody follow that. I had 25 tens up here, 24 down here. All 24 of these canceled and we have one left up here. 1.1 times 10, you could do that without a calculator, just move the decimal over. You get 11 over 2.9 and that divides to, so the density equals 3.79. That's what it divides out to. Okay, cool. Now it says select a word and enter a value to classify the object. Round to the nearest tenth, so that is important if necessary. The object can be classified as a blank. So if it falls in between 0.3 and 2.1, it's gas, which it doesn't. 3.6 and 13.4, then it's rocky, so it is a rocky planet. So there would be a drop down and you just choose rocky. And then its density is, rounded to the nearest tenth, would be 3.8 grams per cubic inch. Um, as far as the answer key goes, it says 3.79 and 3.8 would be accepted. So that is good news. So if you accidentally put in 3.79, you'd be fine. Actually, according to what I wrote down, I just made a note. On the answer key, it says anything between 3.79 and 3.8 would be accepted as true. Okay, next one. Now we have a proof. It is a pretty simple proof, though. We have parallel lines and a transversal. It says select the statements and reasons to complete the proof showing that angle three is congruent to angle six. So angle three is congruent to angle six. Is what we're trying to prove. Okay, so now let's look at what they give us. By the way, you'll never have to type anything in. It'll just be a drop down. At least for the proofs, it'll be a drop down. So corresponding angles of two parallel lines cut by a transversal are congruent. Um, so we're looking for corresponding angles that are congruent. Let's see. Angle 2 and angle 6 are corresponding angles that are congruent. So angle 2 is congruent to angle 6. And why did I choose those two corresponding angles? Honestly, there's a drop down and there's going to be a bunch of different angle pairs. Choose the one that's corresponding angles. Because it says corresponding right here. Okay, next. Vertical angles are congruent. Well, the vertical angles I have here are two and three. So angle two is congruent to angle three. They are vertical angles that are congruent. And then it says that three and six are congruent, blank property of congruence. That would be the transitive property. Now that two is equal to six and three is equal to six, then we can say that three is equal to six because of the transitive property. Okay, 
Next one. This is the one, one of the ones that we saw on Thursday. Um, it shows a construction here, the pieces of a construction, it shows an angle. Then you would put the compass here, make a mark here and here. And then you'd use that same measurement to put the compass right here and then make a mark here and here. And what you would be making is an angle bisector like that. Okay, so over here, it has some drop downs that we have to answer questions about. Constructing AD will create two congruent angles. The two congruent angles over here are going to be angle B, A, D, and angle C, A, D, or D, A, C, however you want to say it. Those are the two congruent angles. And then that's what you would choose out of the drop down over here. So there would be different angle selections, and you'd choose the one that's B, A, D, and angle C, A, D. And the reason, because AD is an angle bisector. Then it says select all the lengths that are equivalent to AB. Okay. AB is right here. So another segment congruent to that would be AC, which we can choose. AD, no, that looks longer. Nope. BC across this way, no. BD would be this length right here, which you use the compass to actually make that length the same. And then CD would also be the same as well, because you use the compass to make that mark with the same measure. So there's our answer. Okay. Next one, this one we saw on Friday as well. Did anybody feel comfortable enough to do it on their own yet? I don't know, kinda, maybe start it out. Okay, so this one we're finding the surface area of the whole shape. There's two parts to the shape. You have a cone and a cylinder. So we're going to need to find the cone surface area and the cylinder surface area. Okay, then I look at my reference sheet. Cone surface area is this B plus pi RL. And then cylinder surface area is 2B plus perimeter plus height. I. Okay, so then considering this exact picture, the cone here doesn't have a base that's like on the outside that would be considered part of the surface area. So just take this part off of the equation. We're just going to find the lateral surface area of the cone. Then for cylinder, we only have one base that's on the outside. So just take away the two because it's only going to be one base. And then we're going to plug numbers into the equation. Surface area is pi. The radius would be 1.5. And this slant height is 2.5. This comes out to... 3.75 pi for the surface area of the top part. Then for the bottom part, the area of the base is a circle, so it's going to be pi r squared for the area of the base. The perimeter of the cylinder is actually circumference, which is pi times diameter, and then times the height. And then we can plug in values. Plus 9 pi. And then the last step would be to add together the surface area of the cone part and add the surface area of the cylinder part, and it comes out to 15 pi. And the answer key has 15 pi or an equivalent value. So I'm sure if you used pi like as a number, it would be fine. 
Next side. Okay, this is one we saw yesterday where you have to do a transformation. It says we translate this pentagon two units to the left and then reflect it over the y-axis. So moving these points over first, two units to the left. And then we have to reflect it over the y-axis, which the y-axis is right here. And then reflect over the points the same distance from y-axis. So I'm not even really counting. I'm just, if this is at positive six, then reflect it over, it'll be at negative six. This at seven, reflect it over, it'll be at negative seven. There we go. Okay. Then the last step, these points, I needed it to get to this shape, but they aren't part of the answer, so you would delete those points before you submit it. And there's a delete button up here. Ooh. Okay. Next, this one you guys saw yesterday as well. It shows parallel lines in a transversal. Um, it says right here when tra a transversal intersects parallel lines, two angles are supplementary if and only if they are adjacent angles. Okay, adjacent angles are right next to each other. And yes, two adjacent angles are supplementary, but it's not the only set of supplementary angles that are here. And so it asks for a counter example. So two angles that are supplementary that are necessarily adjacent. So last time we chose, I don't know, what did we choose? Like this one and this one, which are supplementary. Um, let's choose a different pair that's also correct. Maybe this one and this one this time. These two angles are supplementary and they aren't adjacent. So FGH and KMO. Okay, two more. One's kind of long, one's kind of short. Okay, so it says right, a right square pyramid right here and a sphere arc made of marble the dimensions of each figure and feet are shown. The density of the marble is 160 pounds per cubic feet. What is the difference in pounds between the weight of the sphere and the weight of the pyramid? What? Okay. Um, so like we saw before, density equals mass over volume. Mass over volume. Um, it wants to know the difference in weight we're given, or we could calculate volume and we're given density. So once we find the volume, we're going to use the density to find the weight and then find the difference between the two weights. Yes, it is high level. You can do it. Okay. So first things first, we're going to find the volume of each of these. So volume of the pyramid, volume of the pyramid. You can look at your reference sheet. And volume is one third area of the base times height. Okay, area of the base. It says it's a square pyramid. So that means the area of the base would be 1.5 times 1.5, and the height is 2. And then plug this in a calculator, and it comes out to 1.5 feet cubed for the volume. So that's the pyramid. Okay, then we need the volume of the sphere. If you look at your reference sheet, it is right here, four-thirds pi r cubed. Plug in your numbers. Okay, then when you go out, when you go to solve this, there may be some rounding with the pi button. Four divided by three times pi times one. Whoa, I didn't mean to do minus one. 
4 divided by 3 times pi times 1. Because 1 times 1 times 1 is just 1. And I get this number. I'm going to write out as many decimals as I can. Well, I don't know. I'll write out that many. That is for the sphere. Okay, the question asks for the difference in mass, not difference in volume. So we have to use density equals mass over volume. So the density of this, because it's in marble, is 160 mass over 1.5. And then mass equals, so multiply both sides by 1.5 and it comes out to a mass of 240. And then for the sphere, 160 is the density, mass over 4.188790. And it comes out to a mass of 670.2064. OK, last step is to find the difference between the two masses. So you would subtract 670.2064 minus 240, and it comes out to 430.264, oh, sorry, let me zoom out. And round to the nearest hundredth. So 430.21. Um, something that's interesting about this one, especially the correct answers, it says it will accept anything between 429.86 and 430.48. So if you do have any rounding issues with pi, it'll still accept it. Okay, next one is an easy one. It says, a rectangle and a vertical line are shown. What object is generated by rotating this rectangle about the vertical line? So if you were to rotate this rectangle around the line, which one do you think it would be? Anybody? Here, I'm gonna pause it. Let's see. If you were to rotate this around the line, it would create this, and it would have like a hollow center, because, yeah, so it's this one. Okay. Um, so leave these out on your desk. Plan for today, let me 